right, we're here at East Denver, and we got uh, Stephen King and William King, who are brothers, and they have a company called Imbrex that deals with real estate on the blockchain. So can you guys give an introduction to what you do? Of course, yeah. So uh, William and I come from a real estate family. Our dad is an architect engineer turned real estate developer. And uh, so in 2012, we were trying to improve our bottom line. We had a bunch of real estate listings that we were syndicating out to different multiple listing services and applications like Zillow. And uh, what we realized was we could leverage Ethereum, IPFS, OrbitDB, and something called the Real Estate Standards Organization to connect these many disparate applications so that we could actually have full control over our data and so that we didn't have to syndicate them out one by one. So it really helped us scale distribution and um, helped actually improve our bottom line. Yeah, so um, really data is the key, right? I mean, that's what we're talking about here at the end of the day. And real estate data, historically, as Stephen has mentioned, has been fragmented. That's one big problem. Uh, but the second problem is just ownership, right? I, as the broker or the listing agent, when I originate that information, I'm then giving it to a third party to centralize that information, hopefully be the arbiter of any disputes of that information, maybe give me some publicity in that information. But at the end of the day, if something changes, it's on me, right? But I don't actually even control my data. So what Steven's talking about here and uh, what really what Imbrex is working on is leveraging the blockchain such that first and foremost, the listing agents can own their data. So we can put it onto the blockchain, we can encrypt it, we can give them back a key, we create something called a universal property ID, which is that kind of single source of the truth. Um, that then not only gives them control of the data, but it gives them the ability on our platform to distribute that data. So if I want to put it on Google AdWords or Facebook or MLS or whatever it might be, I can do so. Um, and then the third thing that we're working on is transactions. So this is a really big deal. I mean, obviously, uh, people, when they think about real estate, everybody's thinking about the transaction as that kind of core component. But as I mentioned, if you start with the data and you've got the truth in the data, now you can do a, a lot with those transactions. Um, and so we've got an offering called Escrow Commons where basically the buy side and the sell side can come together in one sort of room. Um, our, our partners call it the closing room, um, but basically it gives transparency into the buy side and the sell side such that we can take a process that can be you know, many months and oftentimes encumbered by email and attachment and you know just the kind of way business is done today. Um, we can dramatically improve that by being transparent um, and being totally clear. And, um, and obviously giving people the tooling to get it done a lot faster and more efficiently. That's great to see some major impact uh, on the real estate uh, industry. So how are, um, how's the current real estate industry um, realizing this disruption? Or is it impacting uh, buyers and sellers yet? Or is it impacting brokers? Uh, and, uh, you know, so, so how's it changing the space that you can tell? It's, it's affecting both. Um, so a big part of our ethos is open source. So we actually, we, we call ourselves Imbrex, but we have also a backend protocol called Tegula. And Tegula is that combination of IPFS, Ethereum, OrbitDB, and Resale. And the reason that that's a big deal for us is that that universal property identifier that William spoke about is we walk into a large organization, a real estate brokerage firm, and they say, Great, you guys sound, sounds like you have a good idea, a great idea, but you guys are gonna go out and create the global standard for real estate, how are you gonna do that? And we say, we say, well, we're not gonna do it. We've laid the foundation, we've open sourced the technology, but we want the real estate industry to build on top of that. And these are the challenges that we see because real estate is a very closed source environment. So you have technologists that are coming into real estate that don't particularly understand how the real estate industry works and then you have the real estate industry that's trying to come into the technology sphere that don't understand how the, all the components that go together. So we go in and we're working with a company called Toll Brothers and we start with the data. We say, hey, give us your data, we'll put it through Tegula, we'll generate your owner keys and we'll help, we'll help you unify your own internal systems. Mm -hmm. And then you can take these internal keys and you can distribute them to all the necessary parties that you do business with. Mm -hmm. And then the second component of that, as William said, is the transaction. So we are working, uh, we're going top down right now, but we do have a public facing uh, component where the consumer can go and see these listings without all those third party advertisements like you see on some of the incumbent websites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, look, let's rewind back to Internet 1.0, right? When I think the first time somebody told me that, hey, you're going to buy clothing online, I was pretty skeptical, right? Mm -hmm. No way, I'm going to go in, I'm going to try on the clothes, no way I'm going to do it. Of course, I get all my clothes online now. Um, I'm, people are buying cars online now, right? So when will people buy homes online? Will they buy homes online? And that might sound a little fanciful today. 
I don't know. I think it will happen in the future. But to your point, are people going to start buying homes tomorrow using crypto? Well, we talked earlier, there's maybe a handful of examples, uh, but that's probably not the standard today. Mm -hmm. The standard today is more as it relates to the brokers and the listing agents, the people that are originating this data. There's a real pain point there. There's a real pain point for that uh, constituent of people, not only because when they generate the data, they then give it away, so they have no control, but then when they generate the data, if they want to move it to a transaction, because that data is now gone and it's been distributed and in other places, they're not always sure that the right information is out there, that when they get to the transaction that everything's been represented in the right way. And so it's a problem. At the end of the day, a broker, a real estate agent, they're trying to sell a home, they're trying to lease a property. The more friction we can remove from that by enabling them with the data and then enabling them with the ability to transact, I think that not only will you see big changes and we're seeing it in the industry, but I think that that sort of sets the stage for the next phase, which is consumerization mm -hmm. uh, of real estate. And you know, there's a lot of different possibilities for what that could be. And so it'll be exciting to see how this all unfolds. Yeah, interesting. Well, it sounds like you guys are adding a lot of value to the real estate uh, business and industry as it is. But are there people in the space that feel threatened by this uh, disruption or this change? Uh, um, d d is there going to because it seems like when you come to the closing table, there's always going to be a need for a financial representative or like a closing agent or a title person. Or title person, or, right. Yeah. Um, but uh, are some, some of those jobs going to go away? Or <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, look, I'll, I'll give my perspective on this, but I, yeah, yeah. here's what I think. I think jobs evolve. Mm -hmm. People evolve. I, I'm not, it's for me, it's, technology's never been a zero-sum game. Mm -hmm. um, I think technology can be a great enabler. Mm -hmm. Now, when jobs change and evolve. Is that different? Yes. Is that scary? Yeah. Change is. Oftentimes people don't like change. They like it, you know, things the way that they are. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say actually more than the technology is just kind of the change management that occurs full stop in technology. I mean, think about how much our lives have changed with these smartphones. Um, we're doing things differently today. And I think that there is an element of change management for sure that we have to be thinking about. Um, but I would guess and I would argue at the end of the day, a couple of truths exist uh, that everyone's on board with in terms of change. One is I should own my data. If I'm a real estate broker, if I'm a consumer, if it doesn't matter who I am, I should own my data. Um, we've got lots of examples of that. I think Tim Cook was down in Washington talking to the Senate about the fact that, okay, it's time. People, iPhone users should own their data. Mm -hmm. So that's one truth and I think that we, we sit really nicely in that trend. Real estate brokers should have control and own their data. Um, and then the second thing is I should be able to think about monetization. And it doesn't mean as a consumer I will monetize my data, um, but if I want to, I should think about how to do that efficiently. And certainly in real estate, it's very relevant. I'm creating listing data. I want to sell the house or I want to lease the property. So if I own that data, help me get to a transaction faster. Um, so I think if you kind of take those two paradigms and you sort of plug that in relative to what we're doing, yeah, there's some change management that, that needs to occur. But on the whole, I think it's all about empowerment. Um, and I think that you know this gives people an opportunity to do their jobs better, be much more efficient with their jobs, and hopefully get to, to the right answer in a way that, that's logical for everyone. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I agree. And I also think that, uh, I mean, you'd mentioned earlier that your wife's in real estate. So there's a big change of management already happening. There's been billions of dollars that have been pouring into real estate over the last five or six years. And we have things like the iBuyer, where open door are going and purchasing a bunch of non-performing assets and then putting a little bit of money into them and then reselling them. And then you have um, you know, Redfin and uh, Compass that are you know, adding a new technology element to it. So I think that if, you know, especially blockchain, because it's emerging, I think that if it's going to start to shine, now is the time to do it. And um, you know, it's fun for us because we actually get to go in and show these firms what can be done. And, this, and when you show people that they can actually own it and what that looks like in terms of, of management and what it does to their business, it's, it's really exciting. It's, it's fun to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, congratulations on the endeavor, and it's uh, great to hear that it's open source uh, for others to adopt as well. So hopefully it will spread. And, um, and so, uh, so you said it's not locale specific, or you, you think it has a, a global potential, but to, to grow it, uh, do you feel like you need to have an impact um, in, in certain regional areas first for it to spread? Or are you targeting any areas? Uh, 
there's a guy in Brazil emailed me about a month ago. He said, hey man, I'm taking Tegula, I'm ripping off the Riso component, and I'm putting my own data schema. I said, that's great. And he said, can I port it through to your front end so that I can get exposure in the United States? And we said, absolutely. So, and that's why we, we do things like ETH Denver, because actually Tegula is in the build-a-thon. We're, we're uh, part of the judging committee, and uh, that's what we're all about. I mean, this, this can only happen in a collaborative environment. And when you say that to the real estate industry, they're skeptical, and rightfully so, because it's been a very closed industry. Um, but look, if you combine those two things, you mesh them together, then there's a lot of opportunity. So I think that it needs to, our focus right now is here in the United States, um, but it doesn't mean that you know other countries can't take this open source technology and, and do what they will with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, I mean, more importantly than geography, I think we can set, you know, parameters based on geography, but really what we're talking about are, you know, political norms, so like, what does it take to transact, um, and then legal norms, you know, what, what actually we need to do from a compliance standpoint. Software's got to be flexible. I mean, anybody that's building something that is, you know, structured and this is it and it can never move or be flexible, um, I think that they're, they're, they've got problems, frankly, before they even get started. So, um, one of the things that Stephen had mentioned with Tegula, which is really important, is the flexibility. If I want to use Riso because it's the U.S. standard, awesome. Uh, if it does not make sense in a certain geography because there is no standard or there's no you know, MLS, as an example, awesome. The software should be able to accommodate that. Um, and that's exactly what, what we've built. I mean, that's exactly the whole spirit of what we're trying to do. So I think well, I will answer your question though, is change management. I do think some markets tend to be leaders and tend to be help the rest of the country move. And so we are focused in the major markets, um, as Stephen mentioned, in the United States to begin. Um, and there's some important partners that we're working with as well. So that's an important piece of our business is working with, you know, not just the brokers, but the large brokerage houses, uh, both on the residential side of the house as well as the commercial side. Um, and there are companies like Compass that are, you know, very, very big and have a huge footprint nationally. And then there are uh, companies that are, you know, more regionally focused. And so that gives us interesting insights on the, the flavor of the data uh, and the flavor of what the software needs to do. But the fact that it's open source and the fact that it's flexible and it's designed to be configured, um, I think that gives us a big advantage. Okay, that's great. And uh, just real quick for our technical listeners, um, what does your software consist of? It's uh, Solidity smart contracts deployed on Ethereum, or and what other kind of technologies are involved? Is it is it deployed on the mainnet? Can you speak to the technology? Yeah, so we're on mainnet. <clears throat> we went live on mainnet in July of last year, and so we're using Ethereum to basically establish the universal property identifier. Uh, we're using IPFS for the... Um, for the attribute, attribute, excuse me, uh, dissemination, and then we're using OrbitDB so we can actually query the logs. Riso is uh, a data schema; it's open source. It's here in the United States. We lie that on top of all three of those technologies, and that's Tegula. And then the front end is, you know, React. It's, it is okay. what it is. Okay, great. That's yeah. uh, really good insight. Sure. Um, okay, so how can people get a hold of you? Great uh, question. Man. Awesome. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, first of all, imbrex.io. So come and check us out. I m b r e x dot i o. So imbrex.io give you tons of information. Um, as Stephen mentioned, you can check out some of the listings there. Um, I don't know if it's worth. I think it's probably worth thirty seconds on sharing where the name imbrex came from and tegula because that could give some uh, context here too. Yeah, I mean, real quickly. So back in ancient Greece, they used wooden shingles and. Uh, it let water inside, and so it decreased life expectancy. So they found that they could put these clay tablets on top of the roof, and it would keep out the rain. Uh, the problem, though, is that they had to keep the pitch of the roof, so they would fall off the roof and break. And so they created these embrasures, which would lock the tegulae, the, the flat plates, in place. And this was the first real economic boom for Greece. I mean, you, you saw them all over ancient Greece. You see them in adobe houses today. They're still, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was reading uh, in uh, Rome, there's a couple examples uh, that are still around. Yeah, so we, we found it fitting for, uh, for Web3 and what we're trying to unify everything together, uh, something that could be timeless for the real estate industry. We, we saw those two names as a good fit. But check us out. So imbrex.io, um, Stephen, I don't know if you want to talk about Twitter handles and... Yeah, so it's uh, imbrex underscore io, and then uh, William at imbrex.io, Stephen at imbrex.io. Mm -hmm. You can check him out on Twitter too, Stephen King here. Uh -huh. um, Pet Cemetery, right? <laughs> than the author, yeah, a little different, but, uh, but Hopefully. it's good. Name spelled the same way. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, it's great meeting you guys. Cool. Yeah, thanks for awesome. meeting you. Yeah. 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 Thank you.